Um, I'm done rinsing my bear. I'm going to leave it in there while I set up a drying rack for it. And then I'll give it one last hose down there. And then I'm going to let it dry uh, a little bit. And then I'm going to start um, preparing it to go into the frame. Okay, I have got twine. I've got to find my thread. I've got my hide. Um, and my frame. So I might need to add some more nails to my frame. My husband built this one a few years ago. So it might need some alterations, but it's a good place to start. And I think it's um, just big enough for the bear hide. Um, when I rinsed my bear hide, I wore gloves um, because my hands are pretty cut up. And there's a lot of salt on the gloves, which can really burn my hands or burn anyone's hands for that matter. Um, now that it's completely rinsed, there is no salt and I won't be working with gloves um, because for the most part, the, the gross part, um, fleshing and all that sort of stuff is, is done. Now I'm going to work on prepping, um, now I'll be working on like tying the hide and stretching it and getting it dry and um, getting it all ready, um, which which might take me about two days, maybe three. Um, and once, once I get to the hide to a point where I feel like it's done and soft and ready, then I will apply um, an egg yolk solution to it and I will start to smoke it. Um, so that's kind of, it's kind of where I'm at for the bear hide or that's kind of the process I'm going to be doing for the bear hide. Um, this bear hide, um, we got it about a week ago. Um, it's not something that we're not, we are not bear hunters. Um, we did not go out searching for this bear. Um, it is September and the bears are starting to den. Um, so we have bears that do come into our camp area. We try our best to scare them off, but once they come in and they break into our food supply, mainly our pig food supply, um, or go after our pigs, it's game over. Or if they were to go after our kids. So far our kids have not really been in danger. I mean, I guess we're kind of always in danger because we do live in the bush. Um, but when you fire a gun at a bear and it runs away and it circles right back, it's usually just 
treating you like a joke. Um, so this bear was killed um, a week ago. Um, at about 6.30 in the morning, it kept coming. It kept us up all night. We kept chasing it out of camp, kept coming back in. Um, so it got put down. Um, we normally, any bears that we have had to um, put down, um, we give to an indigenous friend of ours and she processes, the, processes them for medicine for her community. Um, and I'll link her stuff in here so you can see what she does and how she does it. Um, but sadly, this time she wasn't able to take it. Um, so it became my project and um, thankfully my husband skinned it for me so that I could work on the hide as I, um, I don't know how to skin yet. Um, and it really wasn't the best time to learn. I'm hoping that um, this fall as we do our pigs, I'll be able to learn a little bit more about the gutting and skidding process. But this wasn't, um, he was skinning it at night um, and it was already starting to get quite bloated as we were trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, so wanting to be present and still honor the animal and not just discard it, um, we ha now have the hide. Um, and so now I am working on processing it. So that's how we came about to having this bear. And I'll maybe share more as I'm working with the bear, some of the things that, um, some of the things, some of the feelings that have come up for me. Um, a lot of things, um, I was processing a lot of things as I was fleshing this animal. Um, and um, yeah, I'll maybe share more of it later, but right now I got a bunch of other things to do um, and I'll slowly get this, uh, soon I'll get this bear um, strung up and um, and I'll probably do a little bit of, of wet scraping on it before the evening, before dark settles in. to stretch the hide a bit more, but I'm gonna call it, it's been a week that I've been working on this off and on, so I'm gonna call it. Um, my next step is to do an egg wash on this. Um, if we had kept the brains, I would have brain tanned it, um, but we didn't, so we're gonna do eggs. Um, I'm gonna leave this in the frame while I do the egg wash, and I'm gonna add some dish soap to my egg wash. I had learned from another hide tanner to add dish soap and then the reaction helps soak into the hide better and makes for a better finished product. So I'm going to rub an egg wash solution onto this and it'll sit out in a cool space so I'll find a shady space overnight and then tomorrow later in the day we'll start getting, we'll find some punk wood and uh, we'll start smoking this and that should be, that should be it for the hide. Um, once we take it off the frame, I'll actually take a knife and cut around the hole so I don't have to deal with any of this. I'll actually cut it out of the frame. And I might actually even just kind of round this and use this for something else. And I won't even bother 
stitching up the holes either. I tried, but I kept breaking needles. So I'm just gonna leave them as is. But that's our hide. Flip it over. This is an absolutely gorgeous hide. So I got just regular eggs here, some Dawn dish soap. This is the best for working with hides. Apparently, according to all the other high tenors. So we're gonna break egg yolks into here and then put the egg whites in there. We only want the yolks. Now we are gonna add some dish soap. Move your hand, Phoenix. Oh, it's making bubbles. Go ahead and add it. No, Phoenix, don't put the spoon in the fork in yet, okay? Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you. Can I have this for a second? Yeah. Can I go faster? Ooh, it's turning green. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the hide. And basically, just give me a second. Oh, it's like slime. Is that like what the brain rub is? Yeah, this is to use in place of. Okay, one person at a time. And we just want to rub it in, okay? No, 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 no. made up some more just just straight egg yolk. I think I might have added a bit too much dish soap before. As you can see behind me, I have got a smoke show going for our morning fire. Um, we don't have a lot of dry wood stored um, for the winter, so a lot of it's pretty, pretty wet and it's pine, so it tends to smoke a bit. Um, instead of trying to get a fire going as the day is starting to warm up, I'm actually going to use this smoke here and start getting my hide out and getting it ready to be smoked. So I've got to cut it away from the hide or cut it away from the rope, from the, from the stretching rope. And I'm going to drape it over. Um, I have a cooking tripod that I think might work. Um, and it saves me from having to try and build something at the moment. So I'm going to try that because the hide is kind of small and I'm going to wrap it around and I'm just going to let this smoke sit on it all day. Um, normally, Normally when people smoke their hides, they try to um, build their fire on the ground or in kind of like a, a pipe and then they wrap their 
their hides around and they seal that off. So the smoke is just staying in there and is just billowing. Um, but I don't have that system set up. Um, and I really don't want to go to a lot of work to have to set up something. And I've got the smoke already here. So I'm going to try this method. And we'll just see where it takes us. So this is the hide and it has an egg wash on it, um, egg wash and detergent. Um, it has been on for uh, two days longer than I wanted it to be, but it is what it is. So you, you can use scissors to cut a hide if you want, but the problem with scissors is it also cuts the fur. When you use a knife to trace your outline and to cut your hide, you're just cutting through the hide and not actually cutting fur on the sides, which can then pull out later. Um, so I'm just going to go around and try and get an outline. I'm probably going to do an outline trace with a Sharpie um, just so I can be a little bit more exact. But this doesn't have to be perfect because this isn't the side we see. What, 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 what? I think we're just going to free ball it. Hopefully. So it looks a bit wonky on the back and that's okay because this is what you're going to see is this beautiful hide. Um, in some areas, This is probably a bad example, but in some areas I cut more off because this hadn't been worked so much. So this is all still like not scraped enough. Um, plus some areas had a lot of fat still on it. Um, up here you can see like this is just a chunk of fat. And this area here is where its belly is. So there's not a lot of hair there anyways. So it didn't really make sense for me to keep that part of the hide. Um, like this part of the hide, I could cut out even more of it, which 
I might end up doing. But I'm going to cut out more of that area because it doesn't... It doesn't look that nice on the hide. So... So that's part of the belly, and you can see not a lot of hair. So it is a bit of a wonky bear hide, but this was my first trial at it, and I'm pretty, pretty pleased, um, especially because it's a fall bear. Um, spring bears, I don't know if I'd ever want to work with. I would if we had one and I had to work with it because um, you get a lot of wood ticks but this is uh it looks like it's turning out so good it's still really good and the hair is staying so one trick to when you're cutting out your hide um, is to use an extremely sharp knife very sharp i actually um i found working with uh, a blunter hunting knife is better than like um i know some women i so when you're cutting your hide, you want to use a very, very, very sharp knife. Sharpen your blade right before you do it. And it's like cutting paper. It's just going to slice through and you can do it at a bit of an angle. You just jab it and you just glide your knife along. If your knife is sharp, it'll cut super nice and super smooth. If your knife is dull, you will cause injury to yourself and you're going to end up probably wrecking your hide just because you're going to not, you're going to end up sawing at it and you don't want to do that. Um, and this is why I stay away from scissors um, and why it's suggested to stay away from scissors because you can see on this side, I have all this fur overhanging that I didn't get cut. If I had used scissors, all of this would have been sheared off because it would have been caught in the scissor blades because you have a blade cutting from both sides. When you use a knife, you're only cutting from the one side and you can kind of see I did it at a slight angle. So I was staying away from the fur. Um, it might seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you use a sharp knife, it goes right in. Um, and I prefer a shorter, blunter hunting blade. Um, I have seen people use like a filleting knife and use the tip. I have more control with a, with a shorter blade. So whatever works for you, maybe even just a really sharp like veggie paring knife. But anywho, enough about knives. We're on to the last or possibly the second last step. Um, the last step is smoking. There can be one more step. You can do an additional soften and scrape of your hide with like a pumice or a paddle or wood or your feet. Um, but because this is on the bottom and you never see this, I don't know if it's really going to matter. Um, but it does just soften the hide if you're putting it, draping it over something. Um, so now I am going to try smoking this bad boy. So the way I have it set up probably isn't, well, I don't know if it's the best way or not, um, to each their own. Um, typically from what I've seen others do um, uh, when it comes to smoking is they build like a tripod, wrap the, the hide around it, um, and then wrap blankets or a heavy canvas around. Um, I don't, I thought we had a heavy canvas somewhere. I'll have to look for it more. I can't find it. Um, but you would wrap a heavy canvas so that more of the smoke will stay in so it'll just recirculate. Um, but at the moment I can't find it and this is okay. It's still getting smoked. It might just take a lot longer. Um, and, um, if I can find a canvas, then I will put a canvas on. Um, basically because I have a grate on my barbecue, I just... I had the grate and I just put two log beams on top and then draped the hide over top. So you just want the hide to get smoke. This is how I'm going to get it. I originally thought I could have used my cooking tripod, but it's not, um, it's not tall enough. Um, for a tripod, you need your tripod pieces to be quite tall to meet at the top. So 
these ones would work in a tripod type scenario, um, but I would need to find a third log. I don't want to have to dig out my chainsaw and get it up and running right now. I've got other things to do. Um, this, this is good enough um, and it's producing lots of smoke. So um, yeah, we'll check back in a bit and see how it's going. The biggest thing when smoking your hide is to make sure that you have no flames. Um, I might get one or two kick ups, but I think for the most part, it's just burning and not, um, it's smoldering and not um, flaming. And I think the addition of the bear fat and fur on here really helped with the smoke. Um, and it's a good thing I'm doing it while my husband's at work because he's so tired of smoky fires. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is mommy's bear hide. Is it soft? Yeah. 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 Can I pet him? Yeah, you can pet him. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Yeah, mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So by just being careful and rolling it over the edge of my cushion here or my couch, it's um, really pulling this back out. Because basically what the fire did was it shrunk the hide. And so it's already a lot better and I can work on this more after it's done its smoke. I'm just gonna wait for this flare-up to finish. So I can hear some crackling behind me. Um, I haven't put the hide fully on the beams yet because I don't quite trust my fire. Um, I'm just going to kind of let it burn itself out. Um, so I've got the hide off to the side so that it's still capturing some of the smoke. But, you know, it's shitty when you make mistakes like this, but it's something that I, I truly believe in. As much as I hate it, <laughs> as much as it bothers me, you have to make mistakes in order to learn. There's just no way around it. I mean, you can do all the courses and read all the books, but until your hands deep in it and you've made a mistake, you won't learn the little nuances and those little nuances are what are what shape you are what shape your craft or whatever project you're you're working on um, they shape your experiences so um, this flare-up has definitely taught me for one that I need to build um, if I'm going to be doing more hides I need to build a proper smoking setup which I do plan on doing more hides now I'm getting lovingly smoked out. Um, so it's also teaching me that I need to take time. Right now I feel very overwhelmed and very rushed because I, I've got so much to do um, and this is kind of added to my plate. Um, I do have two moose hides that I plan to be working on for friends. So I will make sure to take the time to have frames set up, to have a smoking station set up, to have all of those things set up before I even take the hides myself. Um, because the proper setup is key. Trying to 
fix your setup that isn't perfect to begin with after the fact. I mean, I'm just, I'm just chasing myself. So it sucks to make mistakes, but you learn from them. So um, the stretching over the chair really, really helped. And I might even, once this is completely done smoking, I might show you how you can also soften uh, a hide using a cord and that'll just help stretch it and will buff off any of the roughness on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Lucky number three. I just prop the sticks up higher so the smoke will gather and then it's not so close if there is a flare up. Hopefully there won't be, but just gotta stay and keep an eye on it. 